If you've been a member of our community uh, for, uh, for any length of time, you've seen this next speaker uh, here in Augusta uh, at B-Sides or here at Security Onion Con. He's been a longtime fan of Security Onion. He's recently been added to the team at Security Onion Solutions, which we're all super excited about as well. So I give you Josh Brower. All right. How's everyone doing? Doing all right? Don't panic, right? So I'm already connected up at the other, uh, the other one, and I'm like, oh, great. I know something always happens, right? But this is great. You guys did great, as Phil mentioned. Um, I was also going to say there's no way that I can be the next speaker after life or larger than life Doug is wheeled in. Um, and so we'll see how this goes. We have lunch coming up, so it'll be a good, it'll be a good time, next 30, 45 minutes. Uh, as Phil mentioned, my name is Josh Brower. Been in IT 15 plus years and InfoSec uh, 10 plus years. Recently joined uh, Security Onion about six weeks ago. It's been a good six weeks. Thank you, Doug, and the rest of the team. And thank you, Doug, and the rest of the team for this conference. This is definitely a conference. This and besides Augusta, I make sure I uh, attend every single year. So today, um, real quick, uh, you can catch me on Twitter, at Defense of Depth. Today we're going to be talking about constructing your playbook within Security Onion. And uh, Chris, you gave me a great segue, thank you so much, wherever you kind of ended up talking about playbooks. So it's almost like we had that planned. Thank you very much. Um, in the beginning, Doug created the Onion, right? Uh, and I've run Security Onion for many years in production in my previous, uh, with my previous organizations. In the last few years, I've really spent a lot of time and effort on integrating more endpoint data into the Security Onion ecosystem. Last year, I spoke about OS Query and integrating OS Query data into Security Onion. Uh, previous to that, we talked about Sysmon and auto runs. And so really, I've just spent a lot of time the last three to five years on integrating host data into Security Onion. I've also integrated and used the Hive and Cortex, which uh, Wes talked about this morning. We'll get into that much right now. We'll see it in just a second here. But what I would do is I would push my alerts over to the um, Yeah, no, don't start that. Um, OK. So <laughs> uh, I would push my alerts over to the Hive and Cortex and have some of that, uh, some of that, uh, some of that integration that even uh, Wes was talking about this morning. And as I started working on more alerts around um, host data, I started working on detections like this. This is, um, you know, title, new sensitive shared resource. Network shares with loose access controls are common places that leak sensitive information. This detection proactively looks for newly shared resources that likely contain sensitive data. Follow-up will be needed to confirm that appropriate access control is in place. Um, in this particular detection, it's uh, based on OS query because I'm hitting that. I'm going to try not to step on this. Um, this is OS query based, and so we have the OS query query. We also have the Elasticsearch query. What happens is you have OS query deployed to your endpoints. You schedule a query. It says looks for new shared resources like uh, map drives, you know, shared drives, things like that, and then sends it back to Elasticsearch with Security Onion. And then we have an elast alert rule based off of this query. And we're looking for keywords like HR, finance, backup, www, or scan um, to alert on. What happened is as I started um, writing more of these detections and trying to scale it up, it became a very manual uh, process, right? So I would first, um, I would write the elast alert config file. I'd even using a template, I had to manually copy and paste that elast alert config. Then I would create a case template with the Hive manually, and then I'd have a wiki down here that I would, uh, I would <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> put all of this information out on. And every time I wanted to update that detection, I had to go through all of those different places and manually update them. And that's where I decided there's got to be a better way to do this. Can we figure out some way to maybe automate a lot of this? And that's where the idea of, of the playbook was formed. And I really took inspiration from a book published back in 2015 called Crafting the InfoSec Playbook. Anybody read this? Yes, a few. Okay. So um, in, this, <coughs> excuse me, in this context, um, I know in our industry we use the word playbook and play 
um, in a few different, uh, for, to mean a few different things. In this context, we're specifically talking about a playbook made up of plays. Plays are simply custom reports. Okay, and these custom reports um, are self-contained, fully documented, prescriptive procedures for finding and responding to undesired activity. And this is, to me, really key. By building the documentation and instructions into the play, we have directly coupled the motivation for the play, how to analyze it, and the specific machine query for it. All right, those three aspects I think are really important. So drawing from this, I started working on the concept that I simply call playbook. It sits in the middle here and it allows me to easily document my detection strategies. Number one, motivation. Number two, next steps. So when we get results uh, from running this report or these, this custom query, what am I supposed to do to validate that? And finally, the specific Elasticsearch query that we need for Security Onion. Also, it needs to be able to easily manage Elasticalert rules and easily manage the Hive case templates, which we use for next steps. No more of this manual processing, right? Should do all that based on, um, based on the detection right up here in number one. And so I'm gonna demo for you what I simply call playbook. Um, it is something that you can download and use in uh, Hybrid Hunter, Security Onion Hybrid Hunter. <coughs> it definitely is still alpha and would be considered not something you necessarily wanna put into production, um, but it is live and ready to use uh, for testing at this point. So we're gonna see how the demo turns out. Is it making sense so far? Yes, somewhat. I'm good with awkward silences as well. Yes, great, thank you so much. All right, so first off, um, I am logged into Hybrid Hunter, a local install of Hybrid Hunter. Um, let me make that a little bit bigger here. And it's just uh, the IP address slash playbook. I go to sign in, I sign in with the analyst user with change me, a very super secret password. Make that a little cleaner here. So we already have a couple plays uh, imported into playbook. Um, uh, let's, let's go ahead and drill down into this one right here. You can see that the name of this one is maybe CAS DC sync. Um, we have some metadata about it, the authors, um, including references. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the attack technique um, tagged and uh, the objective result analysis and the actual Elasticsearch uh, query that we need to use uh, for Security Onion. We also have this view sigma down here. So uh, Wes already gave us a great introduction to sigma. Is anybody here? I didn't actually see the hands. How many here are using or have used Sigma in the past? A few? Maybe a quarter of the room, okay. So Sigma, think of uh, snort rules for network data, think of YAR rules for file data. Sigma is for logs, okay. It's a specification that we can write out our detections in, all right? And I, did, I chose to really develop playbook around Sigma. Number one, it's a standard I didn't have to develop myself, and secondly, allows us to easily share the plays and import um, import detections from other people. So first off, uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new play. Come over here and click on new play. We're gonna import the Sigma, put it into the external playbook, and then we have a place right here to paste the Sigma. Now if I scroll over to right here, I have, um, this is uh, Sigma that I wrote specifically for that detection strategy that I just mentioned. So we have a title up here, description, which I've already told you, status, author, tags, log source, this is coming from OS query, and then the actual query itself that we need. Um, the detection, I won't get into that right now, but down here there is a section called tasks. This is not in the core Sigma spec. This is something that I've added, and this allows us to um, have specific tasks for this detection for how you validate or what are the next steps. So for this particular detection strategy, we say uh, check share permissions, are share permissions set to an appropriate level. They should be tied to the relevant AD security group and then contact system service owner. Again, this is proactive. We're trying to proactively find of information and we wanna proactively find that. So what we're gonna do is copy and paste this sigma. 
right here, hit create. What this does is create a new play based on that sigma. If we drill down into that new play that was just created, you can see that um, we have the, new the title, new sensitive shared resources. It pulled out all the metadata from the sigma. It also gave us our objective result analysis. The Elasticsearch query, so if you saw from the sigma, uh, da, 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 right here, we have uh, the Elasticsearch query is not in here, right? So what's actually happening is that when Playbook is importing the sigma, it's using a tool put out by the sigma authors that configures or that, um, that converts the YAML that you just saw into the machine query that you need for your back end. So it could be Splunk. In our case, it's Elasticsearch. So it's converting that detection into Elasticsearch. And it's also, there's some config files that we need for OS query, or excuse me, for OS query and some other event logs that we ship. And so Wes and I have written a couple configuration files for Security Onion um, compatibility with Sigma. So all that's happening in the back end. You don't have to worry about that. So at the end of the day, you're gonna get a query that is specific to this play and that will get us results uh, once, we, once we see this alert in just a second. We want to edit this. We just hit edit. We edit the actual sigma itself. So let's say, um, let's make this a little bigger. You see that we're looking for some, some specific share names. So HR, finance, backup. Let's say the HR is two false positive prone. So we delete that. We make a note that we have deleted the HR uh, string, too many false positives, right? Hit submit. This on the fly regenerates that Elasticsearch query, and it also gives us a very nice diff, as well as that comment. And so this is really key because uh, once you put a play into production and as you tweak it over time, you're gonna want to be able to see the history of that. Why did I change that? Why did I tweak that six months ago? Or as a new analyst, you get hits on a play, you wanna go back and find out the history of why, you know, what is the history of this play? What have other people talked about? Why did we remove HR from it? Is that making sense? Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me, once you're ready and you're feeling comfortable with this, we can go to edit. We can change the status from draft to active. Hit submit. And uh, there's a couple things happening in the background. Number one, Playbook is creating an Elastalert rule file based on the play. So it's using templates. If it's an OS query rule, it'll use an OS query template. Otherwise, it'll use some other generic templates we have. So right now, we have this play in production using Elastalert all behind the scenes. And then it's also creating a Hive or case template. Come over here to the Hive under admin. Um, case templates, you can see that we have some case templates uh, that we've automatically created. This, the template name is at play ID from over here in the play. You can see we have the description already, the play objective, the link to the playbook, as well as the specific tasks that was in that sigma. Okay, so you can tie the sigma and the detection strategy directly to the case template, and we'll see what that looks like from an alert perspective in just a minute. All right, so we've created the last alert config. Uh, we've created the Hive case template. This is all active. Let's go ahead and generate a new alert based off of this. And if you recall, we're looking for new shared drives. So, um, and this is based on OS query. So we'll flip over to Clyde Fleet. <coughs> Clyde Fleet now ships uh, with Hybrid Hunter. We've integrated it very closely. So you run one command. It sets up a fleet and OS query, generates packages, OS query packages, so you can download them very easily, install them, and deploy them in your, um, to your different endpoints. You can see we currently have a Windows 10 system, and we have the Hybrid Hunter system online. I've already scheduled, I'm not going to go into depth about how fleet works right now, but you can see we've already scheduled um, this query. So query 601 is that query that we're using. So we've already scheduled that. So every 30 seconds, go back to packs. Every 30 seconds, um, OS query is checking to see if there's any new shared resources on the Windows 10 system. If it finds anything new, it will send that log back to Security Onion. 
and then from there put it into Elasticsearch, and then Elastalert will find it and alert on it. Okay, that's kind of the, the pipeline. So let's flip over to the Windows 10 system. And that looks great. All right, so um, I've got, I'm on the root of the C drive. I've got a backup folder. I've got my financials and QuickBooks backups in here. I just need to get this backed up by, by our enterprise uh, backup system. So I'm just going to do a real quick um, share because <clears throat> we've never had people do this, right? I'm just going to share with everybody. I just need to get it working. Don't worry, I'll come back. I'll fix the share permissions later uh, once the backup is working, right? We've done this before, <laughs> right? Just admit it. I'll come back to that later, okay? So um, once we're going to let that run, and uh, OS query will see the difference. It'll send that log, that log over. While we're waiting for that log, let me show you one other piece to, um, to playbook. So you have seen that we have a lot of these plays tagged with MITRE ATT&CK framework um, tags. Did I just break something? It's possible. So um, we see that uh, there are some of these, like we have this t attack technique right here tagged. And so um, we also ship a app called MITRE ATT&CK uh, Navigator. This is a web app put out by MITRE that allows you to visualize the different techniques um, that are part of the framework. We have this right here. You just go to IP address slash. So Navigator ships with Playbook. Um, and what happens is, Every time you change the status of a play, uh, we regenerate the JSON file so that um, all the blue in here, if I refresh this, we should see. We should see um, our detection coverage, so the network share discovery. That is based on the tagged plays over here in Playbook, okay? And so if we right click, we can say view technique, and that brings us to It'll be even slicker when it works, right? And so then you also right click and say view related plays. That will bring up the playbook with all of the uh, tagged plays that you ha currently have in production, okay? And that's, uh, that is based off of um, all the plays that you have or that you have changed the status from uh, to active. Is that making sense so far? Okay, allows you to visualize your, um, allows you to visualize the coverage that you have from a technique perspective, specifically in the playbook. All right, so I have talked enough. We should have an alert. We'll see, we do have an alert, two alerts. So again, what's happened is um, OS Query found that new shared drive, sent that log back over to Security Onion and um, Elasticsearch. Elastalert uh, found, uh, has that configured rule from playbook and it generated an alert based on that, and it sent that alert to the hive, and that's what we're seeing right here. So we have one right here from the last alert and security on a new sensitive shared resource. So if we preview that, the host name is the, uh, the Windows 10 host name, the pivot link. This allows us to uh, pivot directly to fleet, and if the system is online, we can say select star from shared resources, and it already pre-selects the system there. So hit run, and that will allow us to see that we do actually have a new shared uh, resource on there called backup. So let's go ahead and import that. Um, and we see there's some other indicators here. Import that, and you see that it's already going to show us right here. We're importing it with a case template. So once we import that, <clears throat> we have our play objective, we have the playbook link, so we can go directly to that, see more information about it. We also have our tasks that we need to complete. So I'm going to first uh, check the share permissions on the Windows 10 system or the system that's involved, and so that gives us that task. Is that making sense so far? So from the very beginning, we have created a play, a detection play, um, edited it, we have made it uh, change to status active. 
that created the ElastAlert um, <coughs> rule file, excuse me, as well as the Hive case templates. We generated some log data that tripped that alert, and then we imported that alert in the Hive as a case. Now, suffice to say, if I went back to Playbook and edited that, uh, that detection strategy, that play, it would go out and update um, all of the other pieces. It would update the Hive case template as well as the ElastAlert config. If I went back and say, disable that play or move that to an inactive state, it will go ahead and remove that ElastAlert config. It will keep the Hive case template there, but it will go ahead and remove that alert out of ElastAlert, okay? Now, you may be saying, this is great, Josh, but I'm not really comfortable writing Sigma at this point. That looked like a lot of stuff. I'm not really comfortable. The great thing is, is that there is a lot of people that put out Sigma uh, signatures on a regular basis. Um, Wes already mentioned Florian Roth, one of the authors of Sigma, um, on a regular basis tweets out, um, tweets out signatures. One of them from earlier this week, Sigma rule to detect uh, form book process injection with specific subprocesses. So the rule is right here. We're going to open that. We're just going to hit raw, copy that, come over to playbook, new play, paste it, and create. And that brings it in. Uh, it's still filtering. Let's clear that out. That brought it in as a new play. Okay, and it also generated the Elastic, Elastic, excuse me, the Elastic Search query that we need for Security Onion. All right, so you don't have to necessarily write your own Sigma. You can go out and find stuff that's already written out there. Now, a couple caveats. Um, right now, Sigma, we have compatibility for logs that are shipped to OS query, with OS Query. Uh, win beat log, uh, the Windows event logs um, shipped with Win beat log, and then network data shipped, uh, found with Bro. I believe that's all we have currently at this point. So if you want to generate any of that Sigma with those log sources, that should work in Security Onion. All right, so I think that's it for my demo, and it did work. So any questions, comments, or snide remarks? I don't even know how much time I have left. Yes? So you yes. Thank you so much, Mike, for pointing that out. Yes, exactly. So if you don't, if this is really the crux of it is I was sitting there manually trying to figure out um, the different ElastAlert op rule options, the file options. Okay, if I want to alert this way, here's how I have to do it. Oh, I ran into that issue. Um, okay, let me copy and paste this over here. That was one of the key issues of why I did this with Playbook is that that's all abstracted for you. You write the detection in Sigma, you paste it into uh, Playbook, and it writes those um, last alert configs for you. Thanks, Mike. Um, I also have, there's a bunch of other Sigma signatures out there that you can, uh, that you can use. I have written a bulk import script, um, command line script. I haven't quite got it ready yet, but we can bulk import a bunch of Sigma signatures as well into Playbook. That should be something forthcoming uh, at some point. Anything else? Something that you guys think you might use, might be useful. Yes. Okay. Um, certainly any feedback is useful. Uh, both of these run in Docker containers, um, Attack Navigator, and then Playbook is simply Redmine, open source project management solution that we've tweaked a bit that runs in Docker as well. And then on the back end, it's sending a webhook every time you, you change this, or any time you change uh, the status of uh, one of those plays, sends a webhook to Soctopus, which is that Python app that Wes was talking about. And then based on the webhook, we do all the automation from there. So that's all open source and available for you to look at, tweak, and, uh, and send PRs to us. Right. All right, anything else? You're like, I just want to get some lunch, right? Okay, thank you all so much.